the 18th of April. I'm going to sell some of the uh, frost tender stuff now. So I'm mainly doing corn, um, cucumbers, courgettes, um, there's some cucumber melons and another variety of cucumber. And I'm also going to be doing my Brussels sprouts. Um, whether I grow the Brussels sprouts full term, I don't know, but I'll sow them anyway. And if I've got a bed that I could put them in. Um, these, you know, the some of these are going to be going, to go in the fruit cage at the allotment, um, like I did last year. I think probably the snow baby, which is like a baby corn. Uh, the main sort of um, sweet corn is Swift. Um, I'll, I'll I'll name the varieties as I go through anyway. So this is uh, just plain compost. It's it's my own compost that's made out of veg waste. You know, it's been composted down over over the winter. I've run it through a sieve and put some quite a bit of vermiculite because when it's kind of predominantly kitchen waste it can be a little bit wet um, and it can clag up quite quite easy so I've put um, plenty of vermiculite in it just to help it break up and allow a bit of drainage and uh, see how it does you know because you've got to try it you know I've grown in my home many times before and it's been okay but obviously you don't exactly know what goes in it because no seasons are the same you know where all your veg scraps go in there and whatever you know so um there isn't a, a precise measurement of things it's just a good old mix of all sorts so we'll get started um do the sweet corn first i'll do the snow baby first like i said it's just baby corn so this doesn't have to pollinate as soon as the tassels start to show you harvest it then and they look quite big but when you strip it down there's not much in them but um we went down a treat last year when I did them, so I thought, you know, I'll do them again. Because you don't have to worry about doing a block. You can do them in a big long line if you want. Um, and in a vertical crop, so if you've got like a, a fence line, you could just put them like six, eight inches apart in a big long row if you don't want the big full-size corn. If you want full corn, you need to sort of plant that in a block because uh, that has to pollinate. If you're doing a, two varieties of corn, a lot of them, you need to keep them quite well apart so they don't cross-pollinate because one can cancel the other out. So just beware if you're growing a main crop of corn um, keep one variety in one area so these holes I've just used a, a dibber so I've dibbed down about half an inch you know 15 20 mils something like that. sweet corn does like to be a little bit deeper you know you don't have to you know you can actually just press it into the surface and it'll it'll fire a spike out because remember at grass family it just looks like a blade of grass when it's first growing these are three inch pots well uh, yeah just under three inches they are but uh, they do the job that's why I had my garlic in. So I'm just going to drop each one of these in. I'm doing uh, probably 20 of these, I think. So I've, I've had them soaking in water. You don't have to. They've only been in for like, you know, three or four hours. Because um, sometimes it, it can take a few days, you know, for the, uh, the seed to, to swell. But it just kind of preloads it with a little bit of water. You know, some people used to put um, a little bit of uh, like liquid seaweed in the water and soak them like that. It's got like a bit of a growth hormone in it, but um, I've never bothered doing that myself. I've got a couple of seeds left. Don't worry, you can dry them back out and they'll be fine. Put them on the kitchen table and give them a few days to dry out. I'm just going to just make sure they're just make sure they're pressed in. So they're not like stuck on, you know, stuck on to put a lump of something hovering around because if it's not in contact all around, it can't absorb the moisture and it kind of air prunes off. It can't really do anything. And I'm just going to get some of my compost. You know, so it's, it's all right, it's got bits of straw in it and all sorts, but it'll be fine. Fingers crossed. I'm just going to fill these holes in. And I'll, uh, I have watered this, these a little bit just to stop the, uh, the hole sort of caving in when I dip it because it's, you know, it's, I've had it out in the sun to dry out a little bit. It just stops it from uh, all falling in when you pull the dibber out. When I get onto the cucumber seeds and the courgette seeds, um, there is a, you know, a way to sow them. The only thing I'm not sowing today is beans. I'll be doing them probably next week. Because um, there's been no rush. You know, there's plenty of time and a week won't matter because it all catches up. You know, the thing is with sweet corn and beans and things like that and cucumbers is they, they don't like the cold. So just be uh, careful. 
If you're going to sow your sweet corn direct outside, I'd probably say middle to the end of May, if you want to sow it direct outside. Um, because I don't actually put this up at the plot until at the earliest, the so last week of June. Um, uh, last week of May, sorry. Because it's just, it's, the cold winds just shred it up. You know, and they just don't like it. They just, they just get off to a bad start. So you might as well just hold fire, make sure your beds are really well watered when you put it in, because they are a thirsty plant. You know, and they need that uh, that moisture. You know, when they start to, you know, the, the, the cobs start to swell, you know, because it's like a big blade of grass, really. So that's the baby corn done. Pop that down out of the way somewhere. Because it is forecast to uh, to rain soon, so I might just leave these out for a few hours. And if it gives it a downpour, then it saves me watering. But if not, I could water them tonight or in the morning. Same again with these. Obviously, a bigger seed. You don't really have to go any deeper. I'll just push these into so you know they're in. You know, so they're a good 15 to 20 mil below the surface. But. Um, they do like a bit of warmth, so I would put them like in your polytunnel if the sun's out. Give them a bit of shade because you don't want them to cook you know, or dry out. Um, and then obviously, what I'll be doing is I'll be putting them on the windowsill until I see probably, you know, pretty much 70 to 80 percent of them germinated. Um, and then I'll bring them out. Because they don't really bolt the same as like other other seedlings do on the windowsill, you know. Because that's a common thing you see is um, people have started things on the windowsill, and they uh, they think they're okay, but they're like really tall and leggy. It looks like cress, and um, it's not really an ideal start. And that's just basically a lot of water, a lot of heat, and not enough light. So go searching for the light. So. Um, Sometimes you're best off, you know, holding fire and just making like a little coal frame. It's just like a little area with a sheet of clear perspex on the top of it. And so on. just need cooler temperatures or as soon as they germinate on the windowsill, give them somewhere sheltered outside, you know, um, just out of the rain and out of the high winds, just to slow that growth down a tad. And they'll concentrate on doing the other thing, which is get the roots down. It's roots before top, otherwise there's too much top top growth and never to be what happens you plant them out and um, they just can't stay alive you just get off to a bad start some of them recover you know some things you can get away you can bury back down a bit deeper like tomatoes and things they'll just send more roots out but uh, generally slow and steady nice and short and uh, sturdy plants don't pamper them you know, um, you'd be surprised how dry plants can go before they actually completely give up. They can usually recover. You know, as long as they don't dry out too much, because certain things can go into shock and it'll inevitably they'll they'll put a seed spike out then, which is not ideal. You know, especially if you're growing things like onions, because they just don't store. They like to be sort of well drained soil. Um, and sort of stable moisture. It's a bit like carrots sometimes, you know, it's not your fault if they've if you've had a sort of okay season, all of a sudden you get like a big heavy downpour and they just take one big glug of water and they just split down the side. Well, that's not really your fault. You know, maybe it's just the soils, like my plot, it doesn't drain very well. Your beds drain fine, but uh, the actual field doesn't. So that's all the sweet corn done. There's 30 there. I'm hoping to grow 25, but if I get 20 germinate, I'll just grow 20. Put labels in them. I'll just put like a propagator lid on these and, and don't, I'll just stack them on the windowsill. Because then obviously what you sow after this, you know, in about a month's time or something like that, is what you're going to grow in winter you know, or in the late season. You know, plus your second run of things as well. Um, right, what else have we got now? Right, we'll get on to the other things, which like a courgettes and cucumbers and that. 
Yeah, it's been There's probably too many pots here. Um, I just I just filled the tray up. I think I'm up to about four of each, I think, um, just to be on the safe side. Right, let me see out in the pocket. Just watch it don't blow away. All right, so we'll start with do the fence spot because they're open. These are old seeds, so I'll use them up. If nothing's happened in like two weeks, I'll uh, I'll do a resow. Right, I'll do uh, four of these. So when you look at uh, a cucumber seed, they, you know, same as courgette, yeah, they're quite flat and thin. So you need to plant them like on the thin edge. Just think of it like a coin if you're planting on its edge and just push it down, you know, probably a centimetre, you know, half inch, something like that. It's pretty much like whatever you see you're pushing in, twice the depth of what that is roughly. So I've got four of them. For one seed left. I might just uh, chuck that in a pot after. So before I uh, fill them in. I'll label them. It's not too bad if you can, if you've got small trays and stuff, you can just label them um, just one and keep them in a row. You know, like uh, Naj does, he has like a number system, which um, I keep meaning to sort of adopt at some point, but because I tend to do a lot on the fly, I kind of look and think, oh, I'll just get it sewing, and I worry about where it's going after, because if a gap comes available, it's, you know, four or five weeks for your seeds ready to go out. So you think, well, if you've got seedlings there, and a gap appears. If something doesn't do very well, you think, actually, I've got some of those left over, I'll put them in. Um, so, Luke, cucumelons, I grew these years ago. I wasn't overly impressed, but a uh, member of family wants me to uh, grow them again because they're out for little bite sized little salads. They just taste of cucumber, they don't taste of melon or anything like that. Um, variety of this is. Uh, was it Melothria? So, um, I should have remember, remember how these are. They're a bit like a vine, these. I used to, you can grow them like a normal cucumber plant, but I used to just put them in a pot and let them hang over the edge and just um, sort of, a bit like a hanging basket sort of plant and they kind of just spread. But I'll just see what room I've got for these. Just let them ramble up some. Yeah, these, these not much bigger than tomato seeds, these. So, uh, these will just get um, planted fairly shallow. I'm going to put uh, put two in each one. And all I have to do is, um, if one doesn't germinate, I'll uh, I'll simply nip nip one off. Back in the packet again, the labels. You know, and they're probably, you know, <laughs> like I say, probably a centimeter if that. compost in each of them just to cover them you know because all the kerberit seeds um, they do rot off quite easy they don't like to be buried really any deeper because um, they do suffer rotting off of the neck so um, always aim for wherever they come out of the, you, when you pot them on you can pot them a little bit deeper but really not much I, I tend to not I try and keep it as where they are, grow for me, that's the top of the plant, top of the sort of stem, always. And um, what have we got here, St Luke? Courgette Defender. Um, let's see. Probably do four of these. 
I say old uh, tortoise, I don't know if you can see him, he's out down garden at the moment, it's a bit cool today for him, but I mowed the lawn before so I can have a little roam around. Same again, these will go like cucumbers on their sort of thin edge. Just a bit like slotting a coin in some of if you know what I mean. Cool, yeah, it's quite a big plant. Um, but pound for pound, they, they, you know, they do give out a lot. And Defenders are a nice sort of um, kind of shorter and stockier plant rather than some that's a bit too humongous because some of them do get massive. And I grow them in a pot, you know, because of that, uh, that particular reason. Use something like a 12 or a 15 litre pot. Keeps them relatively under control. And don't let them get massive. Just just pick them when they get sort of, you know, six to eight inches and that's that's big enough. Because if you miss one and you go away for a week, when you come back, you'll have a big marrow. Which is all right if you, if you like that sort of thing. Um, regarding feed, tomato feed. For all the kerberts to do find with just a plain old tomato feed. Put a bit of blood fish and bone in the pot when you finally plant them out. But tomato feed's like a good all-round feed for most things to be honest. Alright, so I've got to uh, do one more pot. Bear with me, I'll go and get one more pot. <laughs> Put that on there for now. I'll do a uh, group that in something else. Alright, so we've got uh, these are some uh, other cucumbers. I'll just do three of these to be honest. Uh, they're called Nimrod. They're just like a small um, mini cucumber. I grew some last year and I just grew one on quite late in the season. You know, quite a late crop of tiny cucumbers right up until I think it was November. And I saw it straggle behind the tomatoes. They will, they will grow outside these. Well, I won't actually, I'll just grow two because that's all, all the seeds I've got. So I spotted them and I thought oh, I'll just use them up. That's two of them. So what I'll do, I'll do... Um, I'll change that one there. And we'll put a... I've got a fem spot seed somewhere left over. I'll pop that one in there after. Right, so that's all them. So I'm just going to water them a little bit from the top and then I'll I'll bottom soak them. I'll leave that one out for now. And then uh, I'll probably leave them like 15, 20 minutes just some water because this stuff is fairly slow. As soon as you start seeing your top go dark, you know, it's got enough in it. But because I'm going to top water, it'll take a day or two for it to start a wicking action where it starts to soak right through. And put a lid on and it all sort of humidifies and evens out but you don't want it so there's like satin pools of water so these have got drainage holes in if you're in doubt put some capillary matting underneath right so it comes to the sprouts now same as the other brassicas really um just using one of these strips again which i'll, I'll prick out eventually uh, i've never grown these before uh, these i had a choice for a few i think crispus and bedfordshire basket and these ones um Brendan F1. So, uh, supposed to be a good standing, um, good disease resistant, resistance, small to medium buttons, late into the harvest season, so February to April. You know, because the idea is you tend to sow, you don't have to sow your sprouts late, you can sow them a bit early, grump, but he's trying to sort of like let that frost hit him a bit. Same with parsnips, I guess, you know. That frost spot is supposed to sweeten them up. I don't know, if I, if I do put them in that bed again, I think I can get about 12 in there. So as long as they've plenty of seeds, just in case any germination problems. That'll do. They're probably about, you know, maybe six mil down there. Not that deep at all. That's pre-watered that, it's had a good, right good soaking before. So, let's get the old little sieve. Just do 
it so they're well covered. Right, so. Let's give me another quick. Damp them down a tad like that. Same again, they'll just go on, probably windowsill for a couple of days just till they pop up and then they'll just stay outside. These will germinate outside as they are, just um, to speed things up a bit. Pop them on windowsill, let them germinate on there. So that's it really for the frost tender stuff. As I said, there's still beans to do, you know, and if you're doing squashes and things like that, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any pumpkins or anything. Um, but yeah, all this is sort of planned to go up to the plot end of May, beginning of June, you know, and things get planted, you know, in the polytunnel. In a, you know, in a little cucumber house at the bottom. Peppers and all the pot, they're all the potting on to do soon with all the tomatoes and the peppers and that. So, uh, till uh, the next video, thanks for watching. Take care, and I will see you then. See you now. Bye bye.